All right. Uh, good morning, fellow physics from uh, US. It's definitely an honor and a pleasure to be with all of you. I believe you're all coming from various faculties or schools or centers. And also, of course, my gratitude to Prof. Yatima and the team from Laiha, Dr. Hadi, and, and the rest of the crew here in this room. Now, first of all, uh, I owe you a big apology because for being late today. And I said, the hukuman. Whatever hukuman that you may uh, be, be, be imposing on me later, I will take it on dengan hati yang rela, rela hati. And of course, uh, the titles of my sharing this morning, I did not set it. Okay? I only ikut perintah. Ini adalah tajuk yang perlu kamu berkongsi uh, pengalaman dengan para-para ataupun rakan-rakan perseperjuangan UM. So I will try my level best to share with you the experiences that I have gathered over the years. I started with a convent in a conventional setup in Penang, then uh, spent about almost 20 years in the ODL Institute in Mawasan Open University. And in the Mawasan Open University, this is where I learned from the gurus of ODL, I learned from the experts of ODL, whether they are locally placed here or they are from uh, open universities elsewhere. Now just to, to, to share with you, currently there are six institutions in Malaysia, in Malaysia that is registered under the Open University license. All of us, like your university and my university, are actually under the traditional license approval. So when we interacted with these open universities locally and abroad, the abroad open universities are very, very huge in numbers. And some open universities, they have been regarded as mega open universities. So when I say mega, there must be a reason why they are given the tag mega open universities. Mega because every semester, the enrollment will reach about a million, at least a million. So can you imagine if we get 10% of that in UN, put that, put that. we can close down all the other, other faculty. I'm not saying, I'm not hinting that all, we are facing out any faculties here. So what I'm trying to say here, can you imagine countries like India, Indra Gandhi National Open Universities, country like Indonesia, they have what they call Universitas, Universitas Terbuka Indonesia. So imagine how did they actually, how are they still managing this vast number of students? So what I would remind you here, you've got to look at centralization, you've got to look at decentralization process. There are processes that has to be coordinated by ADEC, but there are processes that you have to implement at your faculty level. So this is why when we are gathered here today, I think basically we are looking at two very important broad aspects. Number one is the learning support services. Now learning support services can be similar to the traditional, can be slightly different. But at the end of the day, the learning support services are going to be categorized into two different categories, just like the conventional which is the instructional support, or you call it the academic support. The other one is the non-academic or non-instructional support. So under the sharing session that I'm going to walk through with you, I hope this will be an engaging session. Uh, drop all formalities, you can call me Andy. I know sometimes it's difficult because of the position, Yakita Sanda, Yakita Jawa. And also forgive me because there are too many of you, I don't think I will remember all the names here, but I will try to scan through your faces in case I will be meeting somewhere in any other conferences or meetings. Right? So, uh, that is the first part of the support services. But of course, the other second part would be on SIG. Okay? 
Honestly, I think many people, or many of you here in this hall, would have heard this term Puluhan Kali, Ratusan Kali, Ribuan Kali, Sampai Kamuda Mua, Sampai Kamuda Jelak. Alright? So, if you have reached that stage, perhaps now it's time to ask ourselves what exactly should we do the same that will help these OEL learners? together the, the, the learning and the competencies of the skills. Now if you ask me Andy, what exactly is SIP? SIP is just like your teaching materials, like your learning materials. But the only difference SIP in textbooks and other notes that you're looking at is not in the academic content, but rather you are embedding an invisible teacher inside the SIP. So whenever you're writing your SIP, I need you to remember this thing. Am I in that SIP? You have to ask yourself this question because if you don't, your SIP is going to be like a textbook where it is only one way communication. So it has to be all phase. That means it has to interact with the learner, which is me reading your SIP. So how exactly do I want to turn this SIP where I can infuse my invisible Jekgu into that particular SIP. This is what we need to look at. Alright, of course there are other engagement uh, aspects that we need to look at, especially when you are dealing with adult learners. All of you, maybe at one time or another, were an adult learners before, or were uh, an ODL learners before. You would have been one. Right? It may not be for a full academic program, it may be for a particular workshop, it may be for a particular short course that you have registered or you have expressed interest to follow through. This to me would be like another ODL setup. Because I am going to be here to facilitate. I'm not going to lecture you because if I lecture you, you will lose interest. Mark my word, after 30 minutes, I will see Pemisahan Jiwa dan Raga. Okay. And the Pemisahan Jiwa dan Raga is very simple. If you look at them, Menata and Kondia instead of Muka Saya, Wajah Saya, you see. Okay. Now I know sometimes you have no choice but you have to Menata your handphone because of Kerja Hakiki. Saya faham. Tapi kalau kamu Menata because of Korean movie, Netflix, Saya akan rasa amat hindu sekali. Okay, but I, it's beyond my control. But this is where I hope within these two three hours, please renung lah, renung lah muka saya. Okay, I put that renung muka you the same way. Okay, so let's this bisikan hati from me to you set the scene for the sharing session this morning. All right, so. Thank you so much again for the opportunity to be with all of you this morning. And I'm sure some of you have made the Mobanan sacrifices to be here. Are the sacrifices in changing your tutorial times, your lecture time to be here, or reschedule your meetings? So before I begin, Lumrahia, uh, saya akan lafazkan serakat pantun untuk. Uh, merangsang minda dan membelai jiwa kamu. Okay. Pertemuan ini lantaran hati. Kerinduan terpendam terlerai kini. Bengkel ODL idaman hati. Moga ilmu ODL berkembang di sini. Okay. This is not part of the same or learning support services. So let's come back to this. Uh, I hope this is not a false advertisement where you nampak muka dalam poster ini lebih muda dan ramuka yang terpacak di sini. Okay, saya harap ini bukanlah impression yang kamu dapat. Kalau kamu dapat impression tu mohon maaf, I think you have to blame the adat. Adat would have done a good touch up on my muka-muka yang penuh dengan karwa. Okay, so Let's move on. Now the first thing here, this is where saya menurut perintah. Dan ini adalah tajuk utama yang perlu saya berkongsi 
they can adapt so. So in a class, always there's always a diversity of learners. Always. You can never find a class yang tahap pemahaman is the same unless you do a entrance test. Alright? So if you don't, you are going to find in a class there will be diverse ODL learners. Diverse. To the point that one would be very good, the other one would be not so good. Of course, you have average. The bell curve is always in any aspects of our life. So what you need to do as a chain rule, the learning support services, you have to be able to detect this diversity. You have to detect this diversity. And detecting this diversity is not only in ODL. Even in your conventional setup, you are able to do the detection. Of course, the detection part here right now is facilitated by AI tools, by your LMS, by your data analytics, right? So one, I'm going into that later on in the afternoon, but since we are on this particular topic, when you want to look at diversity of the learners, you've got to harvest data from your LMS. Your data from your LMS is very rich. Rich in the sense that you boleh ambil data tersebut dan lihat pada perhubungan yang wujud antara data dan data atau perhubungan yang tidak pernah wujud but through data analytics, you're able to find the relationship. I give you one example. If your Moodle has this latest data analytics, you'll be able to see in your course material, for example, you have a scene of 100 pages. You have a scene of 100 pages. And in that 100 page, page number 10, you will realize that a lot of students pause in page 10. Or the students keep on logging into page 10. The frequency of logging into the duration of time they spend in page 10 will tell you something is not right. In page 10. I'm not talking about the content. It means something that would have contributed to them going to page 10 so frequently, or the duration is longer. So, with that data analytics that you have, you've got to ask yourself this like, Is it because of the content that I've written that is too dark? The depth is so deep until the learners would not be able to comprehend. Is it because the learners are supposed to have that prior knowledge, but yet the other something that you have embedded inside them? Is it that you did not convey the message properly? Is it because the ID didn't do a good job? So the learners could not comprehend instantly. The learners have to go a few rounds in order to hierarchy what is in page 10. So this is one example to show you the power of data analytics, which normally you won't be able to do that unless I have to ask every individual, why did you take so much time reading page 10? What is it that you do not understand? What is it that you find difficulty in page 10? All right, so, so this is part of an example of how DA data analytics will drive personalized learning. Okay, so coming back to this COPA, again, as what Mas said, COPA is not something yang luar biasa. Okay, again, another terminology yang kerap kita dengar, especially you are offering academic program. Full accreditation, provisional accreditation, semua ada COPA. So, apa yang saya nak sampaikan di sini, COPA adalah sama dengan, COPA ODL is exactly the same as COPA traditional, except only a few standards, only a few areas, yang dia zoom in to see where your ODL elements are. Alright, you remember COPA, area 1 is about program design and delivery, area 2 is assessment, area 3 is student support services, selection until area 7 is CQI and the PMR, right? So the standards 
are more or less the same. In COPA ODL, they have about 96 standards, 96 criteria. So all the criteria would not deviate much from the original COPA. The only thing yang akan muncul perbezaan ialah in area 1, the program design and delivery, area 3, which is your student support services, which is why we are looking at this COPA ODL from the lens of learning support services. Okay, one, three, five. Five is actually your educational resources, whether it is physical, infra, dan benda-benda lain berkaitan. Alright, so this is what I want you to know because we did an hour or so, tak mungkin kita dapat cover semua 96 standards dalam COPA ODL. Impossible, my dear friends. Okay, so I can only uh, dwell on to certain aspects that I think you ought to pay special focus on to it. Now, in any ODL setup, what you need to remember now to ask and reflect upon this question. Why are you coming here for this ODL workshop? What is it so special about ODL which is so different from the convention? In a class like this, ada banyak tahap pemahaman. So, I actually berdoa dengan kuat dalam hati saya. Supaya bila kamu keluar daripada this day one, you will get at least um, synchronization of what is ODL and what you should do. Alright? In, 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 in the ODL class, it's the same thing. You They will come in with various level of competencies, comprehension. But at the end of the day, tanggung jawab cikgu adalah when the students leave the class, they have acquired something from you. That is the purpose of cikgu in our life, right? So coming back to this ODL, you hear from Hannah, you hear from Wong. Uh, what they are saying is that Wong is telling you about accessibility. Hannah is telling you about the emotional part that it is not simple to run an ODL setup. So therefore, the first thing you must know in ODL, there are two eyes. And I want you to remember from today onwards, there are two eyes which are not in any COPA at all. When you conduct an ODL program, the first eye is interaction. Interaction. Why I have stated interaction is because because of the D, remember ODL, the D here is the distance. In any ODL program, there is always a separation between the chick group and the larger, the distance. So how do you actually merge the distance so pembelajaran akan berlaku? So this is where your L kat belakang, learning kat belakang, is where you draw all the learning technologies, the medium that will help you to merge the separation, the distance between those two, learner and instructor. All right. So coming back to the I then. So the I here is very important because you want interaction between the chick group and the plaja. So how do you make sure there is interaction between those two? The very first thing that you will come you will come to your mind is definitely I want to meet them. I want to meet them. So when you're meeting them, you are scheduling classes. And the classes that you schedule are known as tutorial classes. In ODL, there is no lectures. If you are doing lectures, something is wrong with that model already. So in ODL, you are conducting tutorials. And the number of times that you conduct tutorial is very, very minimum. In one semester, 17 week semester, you have 14 minggu pembelajaran. Alright? Then you have 1 minggu pulang kaji, 2 minggu perperiksaan. In that 14 minggu pembelajaran, you may only meet them sekali, dua kali, or tiga kali. Average. The most number of tutorials I've seen 
in institution in Malaysia right now, I think it's about five funds. You only meet them maximum, I've said, yeah, there could be more. But I would advise you to go more than five times. You will only pick probably an average of three times in a semester. So three times still meaning you're meeting them beginning, meeting them in the middle of the semester, meeting them at the end of the semester. Okay, so in COPA ODL, there is a standard that says there must be interaction, maksudnya there must be a class that you convey. Dia tak kata sama that the class should be physical or the class must be virtual. So you can choose whether you want to have a physical class or a virtual class. But at least you must meet them once in a semester. Meeting here means it's actually interaction. That's why the I here is very important. We are all human beings. If you ask me to join an online degree program, I might as well don't take up the academic program from UM. I'd rather go for books or Coursera, right? Where, uh, I, I, where the fees will be lower, where I don't have to be bound by the constraint of those timing or scheduling that you're going to impose on me. Okay, so in Copa OD, uh, one of the standards I have to repeat here, you must have this interaction, which is a tutorial at least once. So it is up to your institution to have an ODL policy. Merangkumi pelbagai learning support services. Your tutorial is the first learning support services. Your tutorial is the first learning support services. So when you do tutorial, like what you are doing right now, rightfully, I should be sharing with you the self-instructional material. Rightfully, if I want to harvest the results from this discussion today, you would have to read up the instructional material that I've designed, which is crafted in a way that NDDU is actually embedded in the materials. Now, when I say NDDU is embedded in material, meaning the way you craft the statement in your SIP, is going to be self-explanatory, it's going to be conversational writing style. Conversational writing style meaning, uh, welcome to course 101 microeconomics. You will begin with a chapter known as blah blah blah, and I expect you or you are expected to, to, to gather this learning outcome at the end of this first chapter. All right. So this is a way you craft the statements in your say. Okay, so to merge the distance, you have the tutorial interaction, you have the scene to merge that distance. That is why the number of your tutorials reduces. And this is where it leads to the second I. The second I is independent learning. The SLT, you remember, one credit is 40 notional learning hours, if it's three credit, it's 120 notional learning hours. If you are conducting an ODL course, majority of your SLT is actually under the second line, independent learning. So where do they actually independently learn? From the LMS, where you're going to put out a lot of different different materials. It could be ebooks, it could be podcasts, it could be audio cast, it could be YouTube, it could be videos from various platforms, it could be the tech ed education videos. You're going to put it there. And part of all that, that's where you're going to have your main tulang blaka, which is your sin. Okay? Now, these are all benda-benda yang ada in the LMS. You need people to drive this car. And the people that is driving this car will be you. You yourself. You have to engage with the learners. Imagine if I meet you three times in a semester. I can only talk to you in the class three times. Other than that, how do I communicate with you? Correct? So the communication between you and the learner, as uh, Anna, I think just now you mentioned, or someone else mentioned, I think it was uh, Mark, synchronous and asynchronous. There are times you communicate real time. Example, I WhatsApp you now, you immediately reply me via on real time messaging system. Or I will send you a WhatsApp 
and then you reply two, three hours later. So that is A sequence. I'm telling you this have to happen in your learning management system. Constantly. So if you are doing an ODL program, ODL course, many people would have this wrong perception. Wrong perception. Oh, I only meet them three times in a semester. So lega, so easy. Instead of me meeting my traditional learners five days in a week, or three days or four days in a week, right? No. The work that you're going to put in into the ODL program to me when you begin is much more than the work that you put in in the traditional setup. Much more because the early days you need to design a proper learning materials, which is a sink. You need to encapsulate, build a framework. Like mana saya nak rumah yang dipanggil LMS ini. Attract learners to come in on a frequent basis. If I'm the learner, I tak rasa macam nak join your LMS or tak nak engage in your forum, you are going to, how to say, encounter kadang percicaran, attrition rate yang tinggi. Just for your knowledge, in, in, in a ODL setup, the attrition rate can go as high as 40%. So meaning if you have 10 students this semester, for all you know, the next semester, you have six left. Then this 40% or 30% will, will have the ripple effect. The six that, is, that are left may leave again, 40%. So at the end, you may have, you may have only three students out of 10. And when they leave you, these adult learners, most of the time, you cannot get them back anymore. Very difficult. They don't answer your email, they don't answer your phone call, they don't reply to your WhatsApp messages. Most of them are like that. So I really hope you have to actually convince them in the first semester, first semester, that you are there for them, that they will feel that coming to your tutorial will be very, very exciting and engaging. If they come to your tutorial and you start reading the slides, okay, slide pertama, Germany, slide kedua, and you don't engage with that, they themselves will be telling, why should I spend hours and hours driving to UM or caught in the traffic, coming here to sit down and look at my tutors reading through the slides. My tutors are not engaging. Okay, so what is important here? The two eyes must be together your interaction and your independent learning. Always ask yourself this question. If you're going into the class, how do I, how do I protect these two eyes within this community of learning here? If either one is not working, then you better smell danger. Okay? So if you ask me, Andy, so how do we actually bring up or lower down this attrition rate? My key word here is engagement. Engagement. If you are able to engage with them, you win them over, then you will see that they will be your best buddies. They will be your best buddies. For all you know, if you are still single, they will be your wife or your husband in the future. Tapi kalau ikut si etika, tak boleh. Sehingga mereka tamat. Okay? Alright, tell them you're gonna do do abang adik to do saya sampai kamu graduate. Okay, so so you you have to really plan out all those things. And when we talk about these characteristics of ODL, coming back to the three groups, alright, there are different different interpretations of O. It could be online, it could be open. I feel like it. If you don't believe me, you just test around. There will be many types of O yang kamu tak pernah dengar akan muncul di sini. So, the O that we are talking here is actually open. Open. Openness here is about access. About flexibility. Uh, again, another istilah that has been the Wawakan di Malaysia is Apple. Alright? Or you may call it Apple. Which is a different thing. Apple is open and free that allows learner yang tak ada formal qualification untuk 
melanjutkan pengajian tinggi di institusi pendidikan tinggi. For example, I don't have any qualification of diploma, STPM, but I want to do bachelor degree. Okay, so this is where I'll go through APIA. So open in the sense of accessibility. Another open is actually flexibility. Flexibility, let me give you an example. You are, you are having this tutorial session today. Originally 60 registered, 60 registered, but only 30 will be able to turn up because of other commitments, right? So you cannot make the attendance of the tutorial as compulsory. Tak boleh. It cannot be mandatory. Alright? So what you do is you have to show them the value of coming to the tutorial. The value of coming to the tutorial. You can tell them in my past tutorial classes that I've conducted for different courses. I notice those who are present for all my tutorials, their performance would be much, much better. You have to drill this down to the heads of the different, different tutorials. You encourage them. Of course, the second thing, if you want them to come to your tutorial, your class must be interesting enough, must be engaging enough. Otherwise, if you present them with all the data that Sapa and Data tutorial performance their values, they will still not come because they don't find value of coming to the class through whatever that we're doing. Okay? So, if you are launching your own year program in your faculty, I would advise you, number one, you have to send your best general out there. You can only send Chiku Menta out there to face the OER learners. You have to send your best general. Okay? Best general that is the personality, that is the cara dia membawa diri, that is the dia connect to the learners. Okay? Alright? So, flexibility in terms of access. Another flexibility, uh, access, sorry, then uh, attendance. Another flexibility is assignments. Alright? Your assignment due date is today. Of course, you do practice that in your conventional, then you allow extension of the submission of the assignment. You allow. But of course, based on case, case basis based on certain approval process that you have to go to. That is flexibility. Okay? There are many, many other forms of flexibility, but I will not dwell into it because I don't think it does support in the cover of all the various aspects. So I repeat, I bring you back to where I started here just now. When you talk about open distance learning, number one, it is a separation of the chikmu and the plaja. In the separation, how do you bring them back together? It is the L, the learning technologies to bring them back together. Within the setup, you are going to have the big O. The big O covers everything here, where it looks at accessibility and flexibility in your delivery and the whole thing of the ecosystem of OGM. All right? So when you walk out from this room today, I hope you would at least understand what is the hidden values behind the three letters here. Okay? So if I move forward, these are what I've explained. Now, one valid question. In Malaysia, what is the yardstick in Mabezakan UDL Regan Convention? Can anyone tell me? Let's say now, saya merupakan timbalan Manchester Academy. I said Zoom. Saya nak kamu offer tiga program ODL. So how do you differentiate program ODL and a program convention? You cannot tell me, Andy. Okay, you want tiga program ODL, right? I give you. Let's say if it's a master program, there are twelve courses. Okay, Andy. In that case, I give you twelve sim. If that twelve sim I consider as program ODL, no, the answer is not that way. Okay, 
it comes back to the percentage of 60%. Okay, remember this magical figure of 60%. There must be more than 60% of your courses conducted via OER, which means online. It can be online. More than 60% of your courses. So if you have 12 courses in your master degree program, 60% is probably 7. 60 times 12 is uh, probably 72, right? Something like that. So there must be more than 7 courses yang kamu conduct secara online. Okay, so which means the other 40% of courses you can conduct via traditional. You can conduct, but I'm not asking you to conduct. Okay, so this is where you differentiate between a program ODL and a program conventional. Okay, the second layer, second layer is the SLT, SLT, student learning time. The student learning time, take a three credit paper, three credit times four, 120, right? Remember this magical number again. At least 80% of the learning is through ODL. At least 80% of the learning is through ODL, then that cost now a dollar khusus that you can only supply khusus ODL. Which means my SLT can be 100% online, my SLT can be a minimum of 80% online. The 20% is your physical. So this is how you differentiate between a conventional program and an ODL program. Two layers. I repeat, the first layer is the number of courses, which is 60% of the total number of courses or 60% of the total credits of the program must be conducted by ODL. The other one is 80%, at least 80% is the conduct of individual course via online, ODL. Okay? And this is where, I'm sorry, I don't have a whiteboard or a tablet to write on. This is what I was trying to tell you here. An example. Okay. Can we pause a moment to see whether there's any question from your side or any uh, thoughts that you not share? Sebarang kemuskilan yang kamu nak dikikis. Yes, sir. Can somebody help her, please? Hi, Prof. Um, regarding the percentage of 80%, so that's the minimum requirement for a subject, right? At 80% must be done to the program. To the program. To the program. Uh, so which means that it was it was a master's program so that consists of oh, sorry, eighty percent is the subject that oh, yes, sorry. okay. Okay, um, for now the program level so we actually implement hundred percent of the program is conducted via ODL at program level, right? And at course level, at least eighty percent conducted online. Okay. And the other thing, uh, so the first question is, so between 80% to 100, so 100% is allowable, right? Yes. So if there are changes on the SLT or the cost information for the quarter week with, between 80% to 100, um, is it a requirement that we need to um, yeah. present or get approval? Because it is not possibly the same with the so uh, MQA actually has this uh, percolating, but I can't remember which year was this percolating. It could be 2019 or 2018. That they say uh, these are the things yang boleh kamu buat, tetapi perlu mohon kelulusan. These are the things yang boleh kamu buat, tapi you only maklumkan. These are the things yang boleh kamu buat. Tak perlu maklum, tak perlu kelulusan. And one of the things that they are at the end, the third category is that when you are updating your courses based on the relevancy and currency of the content, tak 
perlu buat tulisan ataupun pemakluman. When you are changing your assessment methods, when you do the pelajaran konstruktif, tak perlu. So, I, I would suggest that you get hold of this document so everybody would know what are the things when you change, you need to understand. What are the things that you change, you need to understand sahaja. What are the things that you change, tak perlu anything of those. You just retain the, the benda yang kamu change, masa akreditasi datang, you tell them, ini adalah benda saya, saya buka, berpandukan surat keliling ini. Okay, like, uh, bahan dudukkan. When you change, you don't have to tell them. Synopsis, when you change, you don't have to tell them. But you are changing structural change. For example, daripada 40 credit master menjadi 42 credits, you kena dapat kelulusan. When you change your semester structure, Dulu 17 minggu, sekarang you nak 14 minggu seratam, all the way. That you need to do so. Okay? So, so we will not be able to go through those things, but get more of the circular approach. I'm not sure how, how you can actually assist, but I hope this is something that you can align the expectation of the others. So, any more questions on this? I'm sorry, so the 20% minimum, um, we can also do it synchronous. It does not necessarily have to be face to face. Uh, thirty percent it can be virtual, all right. But but if if you leave the thirty percent out, meaning you're actually looking at physical level, right? It could be physical of you conducting the exam, physical of you asking the person to come for the assessment presentation, physical because you want to do a tutorial class. That is physical. So the 30 percent you can play around. If you don't want, you can go to everything you do 100 percent online. ODL allows you to go 100 percent online. But for a start, if you really want to start off this, my personal advice: don't go for the 100 percent thing because your learners will not ready. The learners may not be ready. But if you are going international market abroad, then no choice. You have to have 100 percent online. Okay. So if you want to get 100% online, let's say the local market, let's say these are the local market, for example, your first two semester courses, you must have temporary, physical and online. Then the third, fourth semester, then you can choose to have online, 100% online. Because by that time, all these people inside here will be familiar with all your online support services. You see the danger of you going into online, the lalu awal, 100%, I'm talking about 100% online. Another thing I want to advise to you, the learning support services is that when you do counseling, you originally have a progression pathway, right? Semester 1, 3 courses, semester 2, 2 courses, semester 3, another long semester, another 3 courses, right? If they are actually for your learners, I would advise you to ask them to start with one. Unless they are academically strong, unless they have more time, unless they are willing, or unless they have been exposed to Udia before, then you allow them to register for more courses. Otherwise, you must strongly advise them one to one. I think it is good for you to start off with one. Because number one, you want to adapt to this new learning environment, this new learning technology, number one. Number two, I need to readjust all my commitments, right? If these two things, you tak jaga betul-betul, that will also lead to the attrition rate. Attrition rate bukan saja bergantung kepada one factor. There are so many factors collaborating together to grant you the attrition rate. Just now was the tutorial part, right? That we need to attrition. Now, this is another support part that will also need to attrition. Because when you ask them to register for three, imagine how difficult for them to juggle, right? How much nota yang dia kena baca, how much exercises yang dia kena buat supaya dia dapat menghayati the LOs of the courses. And coming back to that, another part is the one that you kena berhati-hati is the bilangan assessment. 
in conventional kadang-kala kita kata oh conventional dalam satu semester I bagi dia tiga assignment it can be any form ya yeah? it can be project it can be case study saya bagi dia tiga dan saya bagi dia satu lagi final exam four conventional you have four example you take this four and put it on the traditional uh, the open distance learner they cannot take it four if they take three courses it's okay to be two to twelve 12 benda for him to settle within 14 week study period for him to settle saja that is only settle then for him to baca lagi for him to interact with housemate where will he find time i'm working from 9 to 5 by the time i finish 5 i have to travel i do spend time with keluarga in mana do i get the time to actually read the materials and do this assignment then over the weekends, you are going to call for tutorials. So how do they juggle this? So which is why I strongly advise you to put yourself as the ODL learner. So you see whether I can take this load or not. When I start, when I start, you remember when you start, you are not exposed to anything in ODL before. Assuming I'm a friend of ODL learners. I didn't do my bachelor in ODL. But I immediately now do my master in ODL. I cannot take it. Seriously, these are the Pesukara, Suka, Duka, Ibu Ibu Kido, Yang Telah Ramai Parami. So, belajarlah daripada kepahitan yang mereka telah do. Okay? You don't have to go through to learn this lesson. Now I'm telling you, don't go through these painful lessons. Okay, so you have to have a discussion among yourself, different different faculties. Now back to this, another learning support services, as I said, is the same, right? I cannot segregate what I'm supposed to share and what I'm supposed to share in the morning and in the later part of the morning. Sometimes they will uh, intersect. In same, when you design same, you want me to learn as fast as possible, right? Other than the element of handing you inside that as a check rule there, you must also be sure on the number of pages that you want me to read for every chapters. If katakan handing you shop sendiri, I karang like satu chapters have like this rapus pages. Then another chapter rapus pages. When I get all of this. On the Zaman Saya, they call it encyclopedia. <laughs> if I dump up this encyclopedia, it will turn me off, it will scare me off. Right? So you have to decide. For example, bachelor degree, every chapter will be around 15 muka surat. You have to have the standard one. But I'm not saying that it must be 15. Anything 15 will be chop. It can be plus minus. There is a number of muka surat. For master, you may say, Maybe 10 Kasura for one chapters, right? So you have to align. So this is something the instructional design department. You have to align all this. So let's say if I'm a student taking a program, this program are from three faculties, right? So when I get a course from this faculty, oh the volunteer, I get a course from this faculty. But if suddenly I will get a course from this the power then I will be like, you, you, you're going to swing me off my feet already, right? Why is there like this is so heavy in content? Okay, this is something that you need to align. The QA process of SIM, part of it is this. Of course, the other part that will determine this is the content. The content that will lead to the achievement of your CLOs. Remember, Penjajaran Constructive. Everything will go back to your CLOs. Okay? Now, the next one about SIM is this. You must have a format that cut across every faculty. That means when you do, are you going to call it chapter? Are you going to call it unit? Are you going to call it module? You have to standardize. Kalau my course is 101 Microeconomics. Another one is course 102 statistics. 
in this one, you call it chapters in every bahagian. And this one suddenly you call modules. There is no alignment done. Okay? I, as a learner, will find why am I saying sometimes chapters, sometimes modules, sometimes um, units. You have to align across all that. Okay? If you don't do that, every faculty will come up with their own uh, terminology. I don't know whether this is happening here. We do a random sampling of the traditional cross. We think of, do they use the same, same term? I am very sure some will say unit, some will say chapter, some will say module. Ask the other. Okay? Alright? So this is where you have to make sure in terms of alignment of the Prabhupada because SIP is actually a support learning materials, which is actually under the learning support services. Yes, please. Um, Thank you. Uh, like I said, my, my main concern here is implementation. Uh, at this point of time, actually, there's a team of people looking at Urban Tugas Panchara. Yeah, there's a different agenda going on. So, like what you say, it seems that the commitment required is at least the same, if not more, than the conventional. So, if you're giving three credit hours for a course for a conventional mode, that means we should also calculate the same if someone is actually conducting an ODL. Can you confirm that? that yes, yes. I right? would say for a start, it has to be, because otherwise it's unfair. You know why? When you run your tutorial class, they are going to haunt you. Haunt you most of your hours. If you have 30 students, imagine the haunting process. Lebih teruk daripada the gambar nan tu. Sekarang yang siarkan di GS. Okay. Lebih serang daripada gambar pembiaran. Okay, movie pembiaran. They are going to haunt you. Even late at night, especially at night. They, most of them will actually be free after 9 or 10. And suddenly when you are relaxing, you know, copy thing on your Netflix career too, with all the excitement they continue to text my uncle Right? They are going to haunt you. More work. Seriously, more work. That is why when you send the best general, the general must be also very tactful. Okay? If the general, you have senang tempias, oh, you have Bagi dia masuk kuah dulu. Bagi dia bertapah dulu baru dia hantar dia keluar. Okay? Alright? So my advice is this. So, so coming to the learning support services. Learning support services in your LMS, right? You need to have the proper structure of the LMS. That means for every week, what do you want it to be? You have introduction, you have elbows, uh, you have forum, you have kandungan, you have self-activities, you have self-test. That means every week you are there for the So they can nampak them a trend who do for the every week, for the every chapter of the same. So you have to synchronize this. But there is one more very important thing that you must put it in your LMS is your introduction about yourself. Saya tak suruh kamu ambil bako yang amat-amat besar. Tetapi the bako yang kamu ambil kenalah bako yang akan menunjuk kepada para pelajar you have what it takes to be a cikgu there. Okay? Cikgu dari segi cikgu yang prihatin. For example, prihatin will say, Welcome class 101. I'm so excited that I have been appointed as a cikgu for your class and, and I've been running this class for the past 6-7 years. Okay? Tapi janganlah sampai ambil bako lah. In the six, seven years, I dapat hantaran makanan selepas saya tamat uh, pengajian and all the students bagi saya skor lima, out of lima dalam student survey. Not that kind of Uncle Bako. The Uncle Bako I'm trying to tell you here is to tell them you have all the experience that you want to share, you want to accompany, you want to help, and you have experience di mana you bangkitkan yang lain. Then they will say, wow, very nice. And you must put your face there. You must put your face there. So they will connect the Mekamu. 
it's not that you have to be sangat like you make up the bubble bar or you pakai coat, no need. Okay? I've seen one cause, Kakao Di, this thing, Mada, I was so impressed by the lecturer. They have bought an introductory video. They have bought an introductory video. It's about Alam Kesikaran, Kesikitaran, their cause. They have then shoot herself in Ladam. Okay, it's, uh, hello, uh, para pelajar, cikgu perasaan. Dua, bla bla bla. Uh, topik pertama akan fungsial pertama akan merangkumi uh, persekitaran dari segi uh, hutan belantara whatever so dia tunjuk dia punya jalan tiba-tiba dia muncul di atas uh, pantai di pantai so this is where they are talking about oceanography semua so, dia dia muncul And lastly dia bawa dia masuk ke dalam air so when this kind of video even though it is a three minutes video it will impress the learners, right? It will impress. I'm not asking you to go all over the UM and start shooting. Tapi orang kan ingat kenapa Uni Elmetik itu semua pergi merata-rata. No, I'm asking you to innovate. Innovate ini tak bermaksud kamu pakai singlet dengan baju pijama tie. Uh, saya merasa bersyukur sebab walaupun aku malam saya belum tidur, saya nak buat video ini dengan kamu semua. No, that one tak boleh. Okay? You want to engage? Yes. I think of the professionalism. Okay? And bila buat video, janganlah bagi anak-anak lari past here ataupun suara uh, abang panggil Adik, saya nak makan. Tolong buat kopi. Uh, then you turn back and say, tunggu bang, saya tengah buat video. Okay? These kind of things start bullying. Alright? So, you have to start doing it. This is going to connect with them. This is going to break the ice. To me, honestly, that is going to break the ice. Okay? Secondly, you have to tell them the consultation hours. Your consultation hours. That means when can you actually call you, God, text you, God, if you are willing to share your numbers. You have to say your consultation hours. Uh, then you have to Write it very clearly. Uh, dear, dear students, uh, please note these are the time that you can actually get in contact with me. Then you cannot say, if you con please don't contact me other than the time stipulated here. It's a different message. I'm going to tell you another tone. Uh. The first tone is, these are the time that you can contact me. And please note, uh, don't ever contact me other than the time stipulated here. Or you can. You can reversely say, please do understand if you contact me beyond these stipulated hours, expect in delay. Right? So, bila I baca ni, I tu rasa sejuk hati. I tak rasa macam, I don't know, kenapa dia kata, please don't contact me, I'll call it emergency macam mana. Right? You under the caveat to protect yourself, also to tell the students, you can, but you have to expect delay in my response. Okay, so everything education is about soul to another soul, heart to another heart. If you cannot connect to my heart, sorry, I will block, I will build the Tenbok China. Okay, so have to have a China, that's why I use Tenbok China. I don't know what other Tenbok, Tenbok really. Okay, kalau saya maksali. Okay, so any, any more questions here? Yes. <coughs> Okay, ODL. Okay, I, I, I get your question now. I know where you're coming from. ODL, bila dilahirkan, memang dia punya license is pakai. Tetapi dia telah berevolusi. Ada ODL yang diberi kelulusan full time. The only difference between part time and full time is the frequency of your interactive. The first I tadi. That means the frequency of the tutorial. Let's say uh, in the part-time mode, you meet three times. In the full-time mode, you meet six times for a course. So if you have six times, meaning you have to take your weekdays, evenings as your classes. Okay? So, so to me, uh, 
It depends on the demand of your customers. If most of our customers they can tell they are not participate, of course, a full-time mode will be desirable. If a master of full-time mode is one year, a master of part-time mode is two years. Okay? So, personally, I will go for the part-time first. But you can prepare your full-time there. Because once you have your part-time, it's exactly the same. It's just the frequency of your uh, eye. Okay? Yes? Um, what is the ideal number of part-time per semester? For the student to take the ODL program. Oh, dia 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 sama dengan yang traditional tu. Dia punya tak traditional dia kata dalam semester panjang tak boleh melebihi 20 credits for full time ya. Then semester uh, full time 20 credits. So if it is part time half. It's half of what the full time mode look is. Always half. Okay. Saya rasa ada muka-muka yang tak berapa convince atau show hilang di ombak berlora sambil beramana. Okay, I hope you understand what we are saying here. Any question? Kalau you nak bangun gerak kaki, gerak tangan, gerak kepala, go ahead. Okay. Saya takut nanti duduk dalam lama tersalah berat ke. Any more question? So this is the surat. I, I will share the slides with you later on with uh, Prof. Laiha and the Tadi. The surat that states the 18 to 16% yeah. This is the, how to say, Kelahiran Kupa Uliya. Alright? You see, it started with 2011, 2012, then it becomes a Kupa Odia. Last time it was just a guideline. Alright? So I will not go into this. This is the Perpezan Antara, the 2019 one and the 2012. The 2012 one, you have so many. Can you imagine? 175 standards that you have to comply compared to the Kupa Udiya, which is about 96. Okay, and these are the different different areas. Okay, this is a circular Kupa Udiya. Effective 2020, you can encode, it's kind of 2023. So every one of you, you have to use Kupa Udiya no choice now. Then, if you have new programs yang kamu nak laksanakan oleh Udi Health, you tak lagi terikat dengan peraturan dulu. Peraturan dulu kata, sebab you adalah institusi conventional, if you want to do an Udi Health program, your program must be fully accredited in the conventional setup dulu. That was the old ruling. Your old, new, whatever Udi Health program yang kamu nak, nak lancarkan, you must make sure that is a Traditional program yang dah dapat FA baru kamu boleh lancarkan in ODL format. That was dulu. So right now tidak lagi terikat dengan peraturan ini. That's why this circular will help you understand. Jadi tiba-tiba you nak satu program yang tak pernah wujud di UM, tak pernah wujud langsung, but you rasa ada permintaan global, ada permintaan tempatan offer. Okay. These are the conditions that you cannot fulfill if you're offering new UDL programs, especially conventional institutions like yours and institutions where I come from. Okay? You must have a unit yang menzaraskan all this benda-benda berkenaan dengan policy UDL. Definitely, I think the most appropriate one would be on that. Okay? Your NDEC, your ANTIC, it can be also pronounced as ADIC in Bahasa Indonesia, that is Lapa Pajam ADIC. Jumpa lah ADIC dengan kakak kat sini. Ini ADIC, ini kakak. Alright? 
to look at what are the policy driving ODL. Rafa Kali tutorial and Sophie Semester coming to look at that. You've done how many hours of tutorial every session. All right. Uh, how many tutors I might allow to employ, or do I act as a tutor? Because the ODL set up, you have to give lecture, you have to give tutors. That means the lecturer, like yourself, Adela, the course owner, the willing to assist the support, you will be the tutor of the classes. Okay? And if you have more and more students coming all over the world, then you will say, I cannot handle anymore. Because tutorial class is 1 to 30. This is also another policy. 1 to 30. So if you have hundreds, you cannot have only one tutorial class. You may check for the Tiga tutorial classes. So if Tiga tutorial classes, your profile kerja is really over. So you have to employ tutors. You have to employ tutors that you find a atau luar. Okay. Any question here? So there are a lot of other policy of this department will drive. Then SIM. This is the one you after Manilan Banya Pasar. SIM, you have to submit the first semester SIM when you submit your application to MQA. Uh, rather, if you if it is UM so I create a SIM, you have to submit to your Bahagian QA number. The first semester SIM. Okay, so the past. You can only get for one semester. Bila diluluskan, you you can buka kan the first year punya sim. Then masa full accreditation, all your sim can already done. This is what you need to look at assessment. Okay, assessment is ini. The first thing that people will ask: How do I protect the integrity of my assessment, especially if it's online? Right. So now I will throw this question back to you. You tell me what would you do to safeguard the integrity and credibility of your assessment? Anyone? If you are a cheap go, I'm, I'm giving you this question. How do you safeguard? I'll give you one minute and think and let me know. How do you protect, safeguard the integrity of your assessment? Anyone? Can anyone try this? If you don't, I'm going to call the the top second call Kalidi said that Tang Rapat Sleepy the Kabu at least had a pop of Kakabu Yang Di Chin Yabasina Sina. So, how do you protect the credibility and integrity of the assessment? So you see what you are hearing here is actually on the methods. You have to verify, you have to diversify the methods of assessment. Where you think the level of copy case akan menurun. But you also must remember dengan AI yang ada kali ini, dia berjumpa dengan kakak chat GPT untuk bertanyakan kabar. Right? So if you are giving them a case study question, there's a tendency they will meet with Abang ChatGPT or Kakak ChatGPT. 
this is something that you have to be very, very careful, very, very mindful. So if you want, you cannot say you, you, you restrict them from using chat GPT, no way. Because the way for chat GPT is going out, you have to write on that way. What you can do now is how do you modify the way you assess. You can actually ask them, generate this and ask chat GPT to comment. And I want you to comment on what chat GPT comment in a class one to one. Right? So do you see I am allowing them to use chat GPT, but I'm also asking them to use their critical thinking. Come back to the class and tell me out of these five points that chat GPT commented, what are your views on the comments provided? So this is where you are actually helping me to learn from the technology. Okay? So this is where I say you diversify the way you conduct, the way you design your assessment. Number one. Number two, you can have question banks, right? If you're talking about objective question banks, you have 100 questions, whoever go in, they can't, do, 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 they're close or close or like. That's so Alan can be randomized in many ways. Even the answers can be randomized A becomes C, C becomes D, right? So that is another way of safeguarding your integrity of the exam. Third one, if you want a real-time online exam, you must have proctoring tools. Proctoring tools, there are many. You don't believe me, you Google proctoring, online proctoring provider. And of course, you cannot buy them. You can only cut what is the level of the proctoring that you have. Some level of proctoring, they look at the algorithm on the face. So when you look at the algorithm on the face, whenever your Bulu kening, kening night, apa yang akan sense ini adalah tendensi untuk orang topik. Tapi you have to be very careful. You cannot because sometimes kita macam ni, you get kena copy, you tekan, sorry, you out, cannot. You have to make sure in an online exam, you have to allow them to continue taking the exam, even though you suspect they can copy. Because imagine if you seal up, penalize the person to come back and sue you like either. Okay? Because you need to investigate later. So coming back to the, to the features in the proctoring banya, sometimes they will go up to the pupil, anak mata kam, whether they are kembang, kucuk, kembang, kucuk. Okay? The bibir kam, left, right, macam mana kamu bibir, also they will be able to do that. Okay? So the, the higher, Teaches you not because the thing how. And sometimes when you subscribe, the thing of is it by individual, is it by hours, is it by session, is it by year, is it by semester? So they will charge you accordingly. Okay? Three things here yeah. the method, the question bank, the proctoring software, and the last method. You cannot have a policy on academic in that. You cannot membudayakan culture ni. Right? You cannot be telling them to punish, 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 but you yourself need to promote this budaya. Correct? So the culture of academic integrity will come from the UDL center. Because you are going to Slaraska. Okay? So I think it is good that we take a short break. And we'll continue later. Please come with questions because I don't know what you don't know. Really, I don't know what you don't know. I don't know what you want to know. So you have to tell me within this short period of time. Okay? So thank you so much and enjoy uh, the tea that I've served for you. Okay? Uh -huh.